Hello, everyone. Very good evening. Welcome to this Friday session, weekend session, where we talk about uh, our perspective on market. What do we think? What's happening with the market? I am there with Shorodeep. We have been doing this for many months now. And uh, recently, we added a lot of experts as part of Stockage Social. So uh, one of the experts will also be joining us. And uh, he or she will talk about what he or she feels about the market. So I do record weekend market strategies every weekend. Uh, I hope you guys are watching my sessions every weekend. And, uh, you know, uh, I've been saying about the market for many, many times. What is my view about the market? And uh, I hope you guys are getting clarity about how to look at the market, how to trade the market, and obviously how to analyze the market. So before I start my presentation, I want to get a confirmation uh, from everyone. Uh, are you able to hear me? Are you able to hear me? Yes, uh, Arun, Ashish, Ninad. Thank you, Namaskar, Sri Divya, Sunil, Neeraj, Peter. Thank you, Ashish. Thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. So the format of this session is that it, it, this is a session for all the Stockage Club members, TMP, Trading Mentorship Program members, and also Stockage Premium members who are subscriber to Stockage. I want to welcome all three of you for this amazing, amazing family session we conduct every Friday and we are joined by approximately 300, 350 people live. And also we post the same in YouTube channel of Stockage where more than 2000, 2500 people uh, get benefit from the discussions which we are having. The format has been that we talk about macro and then we also discuss few stock specific ideas and uh, we don't take questions. So in case you have any question, feel free to ask us the question in the respective platforms. So TMP members can WhatsApp us, Stockage Social members can post the question in Stockage Social and, uh, and uh, Stockage Premium members can email us if you have any question which needs to be answered. All right, so let me just switch off my webcam and uh, share my screen. So uh, may I request my team members to allow me to share screen? May I request someone in the support team to make me presenter? All right, so here I am now the presenter, okay? Good, so first of all, let me start by saying that uh, for all Stockage Club members, you have to make sure that you attend this on 29th. It's a live market discussion we're going to have. The, all the experts uh, who are active in the market, they will be there and talking about strategy, market direction, etc. in the live market. So make sure you are there. And this is the first multi-asset live trading experience. So make sure that you are there for as much time as possible. And for people who, have not, who are not yet part of Stockage Club, you have to join Stockage Club because we are doing some amazing work in this club to empower all our investors, investors, traders, and at the same time, all the club members. So Chali, let's talk about the market. So people who have been following me, they know uh, my view on the market, uh, but let me reiterate that dollar is something which is very, very important if you are looking at the market. So what happened in the market uh, dollar was going up, so market was going down, but the moment dollar showed some sign of retracement, uh, market immediately went up. So market was overdue to go up for some time because, you know, overall Indian market is positive because there's so much of money coming into market thanks to retail investors that overall the structure of the market always wanted to be positive, but still it's a long way to go before we decide that market will be convincingly ready for a big big rally my sense is that because market has crossed above 200 day exponential moving average so i use this exponential moving average because it takes care of the latest movements in the market so since market is trading above 200 day exponential moving average i am bullish i am i'm playing positive momentum in market positive momentum in stocks and uh, i see i see market uh, going till these levels 17300 if the momentum continues 
before we see market going further from here i i still want to see market crossing this level and then the all important 18300 so there are yeah uh, there are milestones for market to cross we can only see market around these levels for the time being if dollar remains down i see there is a fair bit of geopolitical clarity emerging with europe's kind of submissing to russia's aggression because they need gas desperately uh, because they they have big consumer of gas during winters and as winter is about to knock the door russia would definitely has has a bigger stronger power to negotiate so i think this war is going to be staying for long but because uh, russia has a has an upper hand now uh, and crude oil i don't think so it's in a hurry to correct so overall i think market will stay in this range but lot of stock specific actions will come in the market and that is what we discuss in our stockage club uh, social.stockage.com lot of stock specific ideas are coming in market and i think there is going to be big opportunities for momentum trading in the market you know the uh, as market there is a fair bit of momentum available so that's why i have been also building few positions so and my weekend strategies has been uh, there for people to look at the stocks where momentum come come so i'm going to record a weekend a video tomorrow so that you can see the weekend strategy but largely i'm using uh, the combination scans which i have created uh, things like sepa fipa all these combination scans have uh, you know uh, have bit of components of momentum which helps a person to identify stocks where momentum is high so my humble submission to all of you is that uh, stay positive in the market from stock specific don't look at nifty anymore for the time being nifty will not do much i don't see nifty going down aggressively although different people will have different opinion but i don't see nifty going down aggressively i see nifty around these levels and there is fair bit of stock momentum getting built up in the market so play those momentum find out stocks where momentum is high and start building positions in those stocks let me give you a few examples uh, of momentum stock so you know let me show you uh, a few posts which i have done recently so this stock sera sariware this is a stock uh, which i posted today uh, when i posted the stock uh, uh, generally i don't look at short term movements but when i posted the stock the stock was around 4450 and uh, it closed at around 4563 that means almost 100 point above look at the chart structure it's a absolutely amazing chart structure uh, there is a strength there is a 21 period rs is also strength and two hourly rs is also given strength so i am seeing this stock <clears throat> to become really really good uh, to give good movement in fact i think this structure has potential if stocks keep if the, if the stock uh, continues to go up this structure has potential that this stock will cross 5000 levels so I'm very positive about this stock. That's why I have discussed this stock in, in Stockage Social today. And, uh, you know, Karan, who is one of the experts in Stockage Social, he has added a very important point. And that's the beauty of Stockage Social, that when you talk about a stock, there are many people who want to contribute in the sharing. So Karan is saying that massive capex here, which, can, which was initiated last quarter after a very long EHS, should be a great outperformer for some years. Now, this is a fundamental input and this is my technical input. If that comes, I think we are in for some really good movement in this stock. Apart from that, uh, you know, uh, look at this world time transformer. Look at the RS model, how it works. RS has been strong. Uh, look at the movement from 2100. Stock has gone up to 3400. Look at the strength. Look at the volume. Look at everything. So if you follow a model, which which you feel that this model has potential to give me some kind of a return then i think you should stick to that model uh, let's talk about no sell so no sell has been a strong stock for some time uh, again i'm not going to do a stock specific discussion it's more of a conceptual discussion we are having so look at no sell uh, it has been a strong stock it has given a breakout staying there uh, right now uh, from all 
uh, you know, parameter perspective, it's a still a strong stock. So I would uh, definitely like to buy this stock because strong stocks typically make higher highs and higher lows. And this is the classic structure of this strong stock. Uh, let's see United Spirits again, very good structure. So this look very good structure, strong stock, uh, RS55 greater than zero, gave a breakout from previous swing high, and RS21 is also greater than zero, RS high greater than 50. Everything is looking so good. So there is a very high chance that this stock can also become a outperformer. So my point is that, and how do I identify these stocks? Typically, I identify these stocks using the combination scans of stockage. So if if you have not learned the art of using combination scans, you please learn because there's so much you can do on your own using combination scan that you don't need anyone else to tell, tell you the stock ideas. So I hope uh, you guys are getting the point which I'm trying to say that market is not looking bad anymore to me. Uh, yes, there are important milestones for the market. Let's see what dollar does. And to track what dollar does, you obviously have to track what? You have to track uh, U.S. yield curve. So let's see what's happening in the U.S. yield curve. Macro, 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 macro. I have so many watch lists. So this is the U.S. yield curve. So we'll have to carefully watch this U.S. yield curve because U.S. yield curve will be the best uh, uh, instrument to give you judgment about the inflation. So U.S. yield curve is also right now going down. So if U.S. yield curve goes down, uh, dollar will typically go down which will help emerging markets like in Nifty and other emerging markets to recover. So I feel there is a fair bit of recovery chance, uh, but uh, don't look at Nifty. Look at stock specific actions because there is so much uh, you will get in stocks that you will probably not uh, get an opportunity to make money from Nifty. All right. Thank you so much. This is it for my side. Rest. I will record the weekend strategy video. Make sure you watch that video. And it will be made. It will be made live on Sunday. Uh, I would like to now invite Shurudeep, who will do a much much deeper analysis. And this time, uh, for a change, we are having some conflict. Shurudeep is not very positive about the market, so he will share his view about the market. And I'm also very eager to hear from him. Shurudeep. Yes, sir. Am I audible? Uh, can everyone see me? Yes, you are audible, and we can see you. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. So. Overall, uh, I, I agree with sir that the momentum is uh, on the upside, definitely. But uh, but I was also considering that we can see a five wave structure in the in the in the in the in the Elliott wave, and uh, due to that, uh, I was thinking that possibly uh, we can be in a situation where uh, market may top out very soon. Okay, so thanks, sir. I will start from a few of the macro things that I want to tell everyone. Uh, so first of all, uh, today is the day when all the PA mines, these are purchasing manager indices, they are reported on, on in the market. And you can see this is the French uh, manufacturing below 50. Yeah, uh, this is the French manufacturing index, which is uh, below. Uh, I should I should stop the video right now so that uh, the, a little bit of uh, data is saved. Thanks. Uh, yeah. So right now you can see uh, this is the French uh, manufacturing index, which is at 49.6. Uh, composite is at 50.06, but it has been dropping very sharply. Last month it had dropped from 56 to 52.5, and now 56. So very sharp drop we are seeing here in the in the in the services PMI still above 52.1. Okay. Now, this is one of the most important, uh, uh, if you see uh, the index, uh, most important country in Eurozone. And uh, if, you, if you look at uh, the uh, retail sales uh, in, 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 the, in the Euro, 5.9%, uh, this is drop year on year, okay? Uh, last month, it was 5.5% minus, so not doing great. German uh, PMIs are even bad. It is 48, that means deep into uh, uh, German composite is deep into what I would say uh, contraction mode. 
manufacturing is at 49.2 and uh, services still are uh, services is still 49.2 all in contraction mode okay uh, if you talk about eurozone totally eurozone the composite pmi is 49.4 so eurozone is in a contraction mode in july these were uh, doing good if you see uh, the uk uh, pmis above 50 but what matters is also this is the production and this is the sales the sales is going down so possibly uk will again follow this path and UK will again become into a recessionary territory going forward. So Eurozone is possibly uh, right now enter into a recessionary territory. Okay. On India front, I would like to show you uh, that, see, we had almost 642 billion. This was the top of our Forex reserve. And off late, it's just falling very sharply, like last week from fifth, uh, 588 to 580 and this week from 580 to 572 so this this may weaken the rupee so although market is going up uh, there are bear market rallies that happen and uh, they can be very fast also but overall the macro data points are not looking at all good uh, the way things are doing and one more important point i just want to show you where is it 3.02 this is two year bond yield okay and if you look at uh, the 10 year bond yield, 10 year bond is a 2.82. So, this that US 10 year bond yield being lower than the US uh, 2 year bond yield shows a kind of a recessionary possibility. Okay, I'm just trying to switch off the uh, AC. Okay, thank you. Now, uh, these are cause of worry. If I, if I, if I look at the overall uh, Dow chart. Oh, this is very important. Dow has done a little bit of pullback, and possibly Dow is going to pull back towards this uh, 32,185 kind of a level. And uh, if it goes above that, then it will be serious, serious pullback. And uh, actually, um, Dow crossing 31,800 is also a serious pullback that it is having it's from. 30 29,600 78 percent okay now if you look at the global indices uh, i want to show you something see uh, since the start of the june and if you if you, if you you see nifty and bank nifty are the best performing global indices okay if you see from the last part of the june you will see that uh, us take index that is us 100 nifty bank nifty are the top indices now what it has done, we have done better than the globally because globally all currencies are weakening and we are weakening a little bit lesser compared to them. So we have done great. But this normally does not go for quite long time. There can be a little bit 2-3% more move. What I see, a bank nifty can move to 37,700. Nifty can definitely move towards uh, 17,300. If I if I if I look at uh, this, first of all, sixteen thousand eight hundred is a strong support, and above that, uh, around seventy thousand one hundred and eleven, you have two hundred DMA. Uh, so servers using uh, EMA. Okay, so here it is SMA. So it can go to even this level also if the momentum continues. But I don't expect overall the way macros are panning out. I don't expect a lot of that. And if you remember next uh, next week, if you, if you go to the economic calendar today, a very important data that will come at 7:15 in the evening is the uh, U.S. Uh, uh, U.S. manufacturing and U.S. composite PMI. These are provisional PMI. But if you if you go to the uh, next week, uh, you will see that the, the Fed uh, statements will come on Wednesday night. Okay. This is the uh, uh, Fed statement, uh, Fed interest rate decision. Fed is likely to increase interest rate by 75 basis point. And if the inflation uh, trajectory continues, Fed is likely to continue this hawkish term. So please understand that your EMIs are going up. The world has 300 billion, uh, 300 trillion debt. Now, if 150 basis point, I'm not, Fed has already increased, uh, I would say, 150 basis point or 125 basis point. But if throughout the rights, rate rise cycle, 
if out of 300 um, so i'm opening my calculator so you understand if global 300 trillion debt if 1.5 person is uh, uh, increased you will see 4.5 trillion of money of as going as a interest payment higher interest payment that will be taken away from the retail sales and everything sales so i think mathematically uh, uh mathematically a recession is inevitable obviously market is rallying uh if i if i if i look at uh, the nifty bank nifty chart everywhere i will see a five wave structure very clearly right now that is uh, a if i go if i go to the 75 minute chart okay so very easily I can see a five wave structure. One, two, 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 three, two, four, five. The fifth wave is being a little bit larger than expected. So possibly we will top out somewhere in this region. I don't know, but fifth wave is obviously being extended and that's what we are seeing. But I am not very optimistic that it will extend uh, lot and if i revisit the whole structure this looks like abc this was the larger a i would say uh, possibly this is uh, in between one two three four five that had happened and we are seeing the last leg of b possibly here and then we may see a very uh, that is my assumption based on a very decisive brutal wave of 14,000. 300 400 count up level after the end of this so this is the elliot wave structure but we cannot trade like that in the short term we obviously uh, uh, we have to look at the momentum and we trade so let us uh, let us look at the few of the stocks that i have given so this is shoradeep okay so i will show you the stocks that i have given uh, in recent times and how they have fared like icici bank was given almost 15 days uh, 10 days back it has rallied phenomenally after that okay overall reality in the stockage club those are given in tmp also 15 percent in two weeks the rally happened if you see siemens okay in the siemens phenomenal rally happened after i had given abb did the same uh, i had and this week i have given Bajaj Finance, Adani Enterprise, all are rallying because the market is definitely rallying. Okay, Voltas gave us a 3% kind of a move. And uh, for the next week, if I'm talking about all these stocks are obviously there. The Shobha is there. Apart from that, you can see the Tata chemicals have moved up. I have given that. Titan, we have given today. Uh, Bharat Foods, we have given today. Okay. Uh, Kajaria Ceramics, uh, I have given today. You can see the stock is breaking out from the zone in a very nice way. And possibly it can really move upwards here, as I have seen. <coughs> Just a second. So, uh, Sriram City Finance, if it stays above 1890, it can rally uh, quite big time, you can see. And, and 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 the Aegis logistics I would like to talk about. The stocks have Aegis, let's see from the chart itself. So Aegis logistics. See, uh, when this kind of a rally happens, I'm going to the daily chart. Uh, generally, there is a pullback. Generally, there is a pullback, you can see. And, uh, but possibly around 250, if it sustains some of the stock can go above 350, 360. So, that kind of a stock it is uh, uh, out of the sectors that we want to discuss see right now as we have been telling for last two three weeks that cnx auto and cnx uh, cnx fmcg those have been the best performing indices and uh, then after that if we if we are talking about uh, uh, if we are talking about uh, the other indices like the banking indices and the reality indices have been doing very great okay and uh, you can see how they have done okay for next week obviously uh, there can be very high volatility around this uh, fed meet that is on wednesday evening and thursday we will react to that in our market that is also 
a day of expiry. So overall, obviously, the momentum is bullish. I, I agree with Vivek, sir, that the momentum is bullish. But I think that given the way the macros are shaping up, possibly we may see uh, some bit of correction uh, later and maybe a brutal correction if seriously there is a, uh, there is a, uh, you can say, a fall in the GDP in the West. So 32,800, 33,300, these are important levels in down. Now can for the time being pull back to them. But I expect uh, further uh, fall in the market after that. So that is the short term view. Crude oil, if you see the wheat, the corn, everything is falling right now. These are mainly daily chart are falling right now. And that is why uh, we can see, though they are not falling a lot, compared to the way they have gone on but they are trying to bottom out also if you can see the cotton is trying to bottom out price is trying to again go up uh, soybean has pulled back a lot and out of the industrial uh, commodities if, if i'm looking at see aluminium is trying to take support in the previous pullback point it can again go higher copper is weak there is no doubt but again this is the zone was previous high so it can again go higher Iron ore is not doing anything special, okay. But if you see the crude oil is also near the support zone. If 92 is held, actually, we can again see a pullback towards 110, that kind of level. Not sure that what will happen because there is a recession here, and if there is a recession actually taking place, we may see crude oil falling also. That is positive for India. Zinc has not fallen a lot. Zinc can bounce from here so this is overall macro scenario i will keep on uh, if you are part of this stockage uh, club i will uh, and the tmp i will keep on sharing trading ideas with you throughout the week as i do share you can see that i am continuously sharing and our team is continuously sharing this was voltas and uh, uh, this was Lakshmi machine works which did phenomenally well so astrazeneca did well so Dr. Reddy Laboratories. So most of these stocks in the buying side, they were discussed and they have performed well. So we discussed that. I, I wish all of you join the club and uh, be part of this wonderful community. And if you want to learn trading, you can uh, join this. Just a second I will take. So. can join this mentorship program. We have four mentors there, the five mentors there. Vivek ji is the super mentor. And apart from that, uh, Chetan sir, uh, Koshik sir, Chunandu sir and me. So this is a super mentorship program for six, seven months. Those who want to be full-time trader can opt for this. So that's all. I want to hand it over to Nikhil ji. Nikhil ji, uh, are, am I audible to all of uh, you? Can you please take it over from me right now? Thank you. Uh, hello everyone. Uh, am I audible? Can you please? Uh, Nikhil ji, you are audible. Please go ahead. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Sarodeep. So, uh, hello everyone. My name is Nikhil Gangil, and uh, I'm a fellow member of your Stockage Social. So, what we are going to discuss uh, here about market uh, from fundamental point of view. Uh, not so much of chart saying, but we'll look at how market looks like from fundamental point of view, from valuations point of view. And uh, when we talk about fundamentals, we'll always be talking about uh, a long term view, uh, one year, two year, three year from here. So uh, this is one of the valuation index I presented in last webinar, but a lot of people were not able to join. So I'll present it again. I'll explain it again. So uh, this is a valuation index that I follow myself. So uh, uh, this is nothing but a fusion of market valuation, sectoral valuation, and uh, the bull and bear uh, stock price fluctuations. So uh, we have created this index and uh, it has historically given us the great results. And uh, so how does this work is this uh, uh, orange one is the uh, undervaluation tick and uh, the blue one is the overvaluation tick 
and uh, whenever the undervaluation tick is higher and overvaluation tick is lower the both things should happen we will consider the market extremely undervalued like in 2009 2020 2012 2014 and 2020 and whenever the opposite happens we will consider the market uh, overvalued like in 2008 2010 and uh, 2018 and uh, the same thing happened in 2021 so uh, if I can conclude here, I can conclude this that the market seems little overvalued even though the market has corrected and the undervaluation and overvaluation are trying to emerge but uh, the, the gap between them is still high and uh, I think it is uh, more high than ever in the future of uh, ever in the past or like uh, you can say 12 years after 2010 there has not been such gap so uh, i would say that the market is still overvalued now from here there can be two uh, possibilities whether the market corrects or the fundamentals or the financials go up drastically so these are the only two possibilities here uh, whether but the the earning per share of the nifty index and uh, uh, overall market index also they are going up for the last two years and uh, at some point they have been exhausting so it will be very hard to say whether they will keep up with the market or not it looks like more that uh, the market will either correct or have a time correction maybe mark uh, the index cannot perform for more like uh, six months or one year so we can see either price correction or time, time correction for next six months to one year so as uh, Vixar also rightly said, this is the time to be stock specific and uh, only the specific stocks will continue to do well in the future and uh, and most of the market and the stocks specifically which have worked in last 2-3 years may not do very well. Uh, they may end up perform in the, even the market uh, in next uh, 6 months or 1 year. So uh, since this is my view on the overall market, uh, one might ask that how do we find out the sectoral leader, how do we find out the stocks which may outperform the market for la next next years to come if, you have, if we have a long term view on the market. So I uh, will present you one study that I did in 2018, it is a 13 year extensive study. I have presented it as I said in the last webinar also but some people were not able to attend. So I'll present it again. Uh, so basically in 2000, uh, I took a lot of parameters that everybody talks about. Uh, according to them, they, those are the parameters that work. And uh, I did a back testing on those parameters uh, against the stock price performance. So I took uh, more than 15 uh, fundamental parameters. Uh, 4 of growth, 3 of quality and 4 of valuation and some other parameters like uh, promoter holding, debt to equity and all. And uh, I did 10 years back testing and I plotted the stock price returns against these parameters. Uh, as, a, as a fundamental investor, I do not tend to rely just on the back testing results. So I believe in forward testing also. Forward testing means real, real investing basically. So I did that also. So I'll be sharing uh, what I what I found out as a result. So uh, these 15 parameters and their permutations and combinations uh, that I took had these results. So uh, one of the results that I'm showing here right now is sales growth versus 10 years returns. Uh, it is very much uh, uh, clearly visible that uh, all. So basically, these are all the stocks. I'll just explain how this chart works so these are basically the companies and uh, the x axis is the sales growth for uh, 10 years and the cagr is the stock price returns every year so these are stock price returns these are sales growth and this is this chart is made for 10 years 10 year returns so this plot is very clear as the stock price the sales is uh, going up the cagr is also going up you can see some of the 
stocks which have good sales growth having giving very good cagr also so the chart is setting a very good tone here but when i see uh, some of the stocks i see that there are some stocks there where sales growth is higher but the cagr is not that good and there are companies where sales growth is in negative but the cagr is still high so where the sales growth is high and the stock price returns is uh, returns are also high i call it a win zone and where the condition is opposite i call it a lose zone so i um, i mark them by a green and red as you can see the red area is also significant in this case so um, when i didn't find it a holy grail i moved forward the second chart i made was uh, roc as you can see this chart is also very clear as the roc is increasing the stock price returns are also increasing but if i have to uh, plot win and loses on this chart uh, this will look like this a lot of stocks where high roc is there but they have not given uh, good stock price returns and uh, there are stocks which have lower roce and they have given good cagr for next last 10 years other charts that i made were uh, profit growth versus returns as you can see win and lose here and p by e ratio versus returns a lot of people say uh, you will find a lot of valuation investors saying that high low pe means higher returns as you can see here that uh, a lot of stocks which were having lower pe they didn't give uh, a very good cagr meanwhile a lot of stocks which had higher pe all along 10 years they gave good returns so when i didn't find holy grail in any of the one parameter i went towards the fusion so what is fusion uh, joel greenblatt gave a formula of uh, what he called magic formula and uh, the fusion works like uh, if you have a uh, 100 companies like uh, these are the capital goods company I, if i collect 110 companies of capital goods and i first rank them on the basis of roc and on the basis of ev by beta so higher the roc better the rank lesser the ev by beta better the rank and i uh, just do a plus b so i calculate the total rank and i sort them on the basis of uh, the total rank and i buy a top 3 or top 4 or top 5 so um i did this for last 10 years and uh, this is how uh, the the results are seen can be seen so the the best thing about this fusion is that you only care about these this part you only care about top 100 stocks or top 50 stocks the stocks that you are going to buy you can see there are a lot of stocks which have lesser rank which has done very good 50% 60% cagr also but i really don't care about these stocks because they i won't even buy them right i will only buy these these stocks and they have done well so i am content with it but as you can see this also has a uh, loose area for last 10 years so the thing about uh, back testing is if you cannot find holy grail in the back testing there is very less chance you will find good returns in the forward testing or real real investing because uh, because of all the unforeseen activities and all all the psychological impacts that you are going to face so uh, i i started i kept making other permutations and combinations so this was the permutation combination of roc ev by beta the next combination i made of uh, sales growth roc this this looks like this i made uh, 15 20 more permutations and combinations Uh, just like i did with one parameter one uh, one fusion that intrigued me and uh, later became intrinsic value ranking system and uh, today we uh, we start our stock picking from here from from this formula uh, nearly 40 50% of our multi bagger comes from this formula is three year sales growth 
थ्री ईयर आर ओ सी एंड पी बाई बी रेशो सो बेटर द रैंक बेटर द सेल्स ग्रोथ हायर द रैंक बेटर द आर ओ सी हायर द रैंक लोअर द पी बाई बी रेशो हायर द रैंक एंड दिस इज द टेन ईयर बैक टेस्टिंग रिजल्ट ऑफ इंटरनेशनल वैल्यू रैंकिंग फॉर्मुला सो इफ यू टेक टॉप फिफ्टी स्टॉक्स फॉर लास्ट टेन ईयर this uh, this was the cagr the testing cagr for 40.7 so i didn't stop here as i have already mentioned i went further and uh, i went on uh, to do forward testing for next 3 years and uh, next 3 years returns that i found was extraordinary and uh, this was 73.1% cagr and uh, that includes 2020 and 2021 bull market returns also obviously that also includes micro cap stock performance also uh, but this is the overall uh, view of the uh, 2500 companies so i didn't want to uh, taint it so i just uh, let all the companies do whatever they were doing so this is uh, so that is how this became the main uh, basically doorway you can see the first thing that we do to find multi baggers after we after that we started doing our uh, uh, all the quality checks and uh, other checks so that we don't get trapped in all, all the companies and all so uh, basically this is uh, this is uh, our screening method you can say or our ranking method so what we do is uh, we go to out of favor sectors and uh, we rank them on the basis of growth performance and valuation as i told you here and then we remove mark, uh, market cap less than 200 crore companies and uh, on that basis i have been giving advices to our clients and uh, to our uh, stockage uh, social members uh, last uh, some advices that i have records of are these in the january that we gave some advices uh, we have done some pretty good in these some of the advice psp project 21% hero moto corp 19% kiran kewal kewal kiran 30% in one month krbl 20% and uh, some of are in negative also but we don't have big negatives because the market was overall higher in the in the, in the Uh, month so this was a very short term performance i don't rely on it even though it was in my favor it was very good performance for a, for a month but uh, we are not here for short term performance we will keep looking at it from long term point of view and uh, we will uh, keep providing value to all who are connected to us on uh, uh, stock as so stock as social also and twitter also so uh one so this you can go to this profile and uh, this is where i reside i got one uh, doubt on stockage itself that uh, do we have some kind of uh, uh, automated system where we can go and check out these uh, uh, these top ranking formulas top ranking king stocks and um, stockage i don't think they currently have this so i have made a free tool free for everyone and uh, you can go to this website intrinsic value and uh, we have uh, made this tool free for everyone uh, you can screen uh, you can rank the stocks uh, on basis of uh, their performance whatever we discussed the three parameters that we discussed and uh, so let me just let me just open okay so this go to intrinsic value ranking tool
so what you do is you go to page number 2 so this one was market cap wise and the second one is sector wise so you go to sector wise you select a sector like i am selecting pharmaceutical and drugs and uh, that's it i got the top uh, ranking stocks on the basis of intrinsic value ranking system so what i can do is a total have i have total have uh, 92 stocks on uh, in the pharma pharmaceutical and drugs so what i can do is you can i can take 5 6 top 5 7 one stocks and i can start doing my analysis i can start studying these companies and i can take uh, decisions on these companies so basically these are the market leaders for me so uh, what i believe in is that every time market corrects uh, and uh, some kind of disruptions happen a uh, new market leader emerges and new winners emerges never the same the stocks that are already worked uh, in last 2 3 years they may not uh, work that much but the new leaders will emerge new sectoral leaders i have already talked about construction pharma and uh, tobacco so you can go to these sectors and you can find the the leaders in those sectors uh, like i was talking about construction so you can go to engineering and construction only and the first stock you got is gpil ge power then koshalya ashoka buildicon cnc construction pnc infra so what you can do is you can take top 10 stocks and you can start studying on those stocks so uh, try this one this tool as i said is free and always will be free and uh, this is all from my side uh, today so if you have any doubt uh, you can ask uh keur ji very good thank you as sunil how this chart generated please throw some light so uh, i i assume that you are talking about this chart so this chart is generated by the fusion of uh, market valuation sectoral valuation and uh, uh, this market volatility like ups and downs so uh, more the uh, this uh, 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 um, more the gap between these and uh, you can see that uh, market has been overvalued if the overvaluation is high and uh, when the gap is uh, reversed so the undervaluation is high overvaluation is down you can say the market is undervalued okay uh which sector is going to be the leader in the next rally uh that nobody knows uh, we don't know which sector is going to be the leader but we do know which sectors are under undervalued uh, that is construction and uh, uh, pharmaceutical tobacco and uh, hospitality these are some of the sectors that uh, are undervalued okay so this is all from my side if you have any stock related queries uh, you can ask on the stockage platform and uh, uh, i think uh, we can end this one stop sharing screen thank you thank you very much